Welcome to AP Calculus. We're doing section 2.1 out of our book, and we're going to be doing the derivative and the tangent line problem. And so this is the start of the first section or the first half of what we do in calculus, and that deals with the derivative. So why don't you, we've already done the intro to derivatives worksheet in class, why don't you do number two, the warm up, and plug in that function using uh, this evaluation that we have here. And then I'll show the result when you're done. So pause that now, please. So you can check your answer here. If you didn't get that right, maybe you want to check. First of all, when you subtract f of x, you need to distribute this negative. So that's one common mistake. The other one is, did you expand this? And then you were able to simplify different things. So double check your work and look at that. When we talk about this concept of the derivative, we can also talk about zooming in and something that's called local linearity. So if I take this curve, f of x, and I zoom in at, for instance, x equal to 1, what's going to happen is that I'm going to start looking, or it's, the curve is going to start looking like it is a straight line. So if I have this graph here, let me get this into view a little bit better. If I have this graph here, what I can do is I can zoom in. And so I'm zooming in at x equal to 1. And you can see this here. And so if I zoom in again, now my curve is starting to look like a straight line. So I'm going to keep on zooming here. And in this case, the straight line is not doesn't have much of a slant to it. In fact, it's going to be look like it's going to be a slope of 0. Sooner or later, when I zoom in this, there it looks like a horizontal line. So local linearity means that if I zoom in enough, it is going to look like a straight line. And what we want to do is look at what is the slope when, in this case, when x is equal to 1. What's the slope of my line when I zoom in? Another way to look at it is what is the slope of the tangent line? The tangent line would cut across this curve and conceivably just one point, and it would be tangent to this curve. The slope of that line would be the derivative. And so we got a couple ideas going on there. Uh, you could either look at the tangent line or local linearity. With the calculator nowadays, zooming in really makes it look quite nice. Um, now if we look at the definition of a derivative, what we want to look at is, and I'm going to have a different case here. This is 0.5x squared. And I'm going to use Sketchpad here to kind of do this one. What happens is that we can take something that's called the slope of the secant line. So if I take uh, a secant line, will cross the curve, you could say in more than one point, probably two points, depending upon how far it's stretched out. But this would be a secant line between two points on the curve. If I'm looking for the derivative at this value of x, what I can do is I can say, well, if I take this point x, f of x, and I add a little bit, and in this case, that little bit we call h. Sometimes you'll see delta x, but in this case, we're going to add a little bit, which we call h. Then the y-coordinate is going to be f of x plus h. And what we're going to do with this secant line, the whole idea is that I want to get the slope of the actual tangent line. So what I can do with this is I can bring this secant line and what's happening in my value of h? Well, I hope you realize that h is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As it does get to 0, then I hope you can see that I do have a tangent line there now that will just intersect the curve. And I have my local linearity. And therefore, if I put this into a slope formula, then I'm going to have the slope of the tangent line, which would be equivalent to the derivative. And I hope you notice that it doesn't matter which side I come from. As h goes to 0, this thing will give me the slope of the tangent line. So that's what that picture is on your curve. So what's going to happen is that we're going to take this h value and we're going to make it go to 0. So first of all, we want to find the slope. Well, what's the definition of the slope? We can go y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. That's the overall definition of the slope. 
And so I can call this M. I don't know why my values are disappearing there. Now, if I want to find the slope of this particular secant, I have two points here. And so I'm going to take the y coordinate, f of x plus h, of one of the values, and I'm going to subtract this f of x. So all I'm doing is finding the slope of the secant, and I took the y2 minus the y1. And I'm going to divide by the x coordinate. So it's going to be x plus h minus my x. And if you look, the x's will cancel. And so all I'm left with is f of, I'll just write it. So this is the slope of the secant line. And now we want to find the slope of the tangent line. And so what did we say that we were going to do with h? Well, we're going to make h go to 0. And that's what we did with that um, other sketch that we had there before. So I'm going to take this slope, and I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. Oh, these disappearing little things are getting annoying for me. And so then we want that to happen. And so the slope of the tangent line is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of this slope of the secant line. We're going to make this h go to 0. And then that will give us what the derivative is. And so this is exactly the same down here. This is the slope of the tangent. And I'm going to let you write that in there. OK? It's the whole thing with the limit. That would be the derivative. Here's the notation that we use for the derivative. We say that this is f prime. f prime of x. OK? So f prime of x is this right here. And that is the derivative of f. Going down to our definitions down here, what happens with this, if you read this one, f is defined on the open interval containing c. So if you look at this definition, I have a c in here rather than an x value. Also, I have a delta x. Well, delta x and h are considered to be, you know, some people use delta x, some people use h. They're the same thing. It's a small change in x. And that's what h is as well. And so this is a specific definition or a definition for a specific x value. So I'm finding the slope of the tangent at some specific value. And in this case, it's namely c. OK, and then if you look at this one down here, this one is the derivative, and it's a general general definition. And so this is, works for all x. So any point on the curve, so if I give you some curve, I could find the derivative in terms of x, and so all I'd have to do is plug in an x value. That would tell you the derivative at that point, which is the slope of the tangent. And so now we go to the examples on the back. We want to find the slope of the tangent to f of x equals x squared plus 4 at the point negative 2, 8. Like I said, you could use the first definition I gave you or the second definition. I like using just the general one. and plugging in at the end. So we'll see how this works. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h, or delta x if you want, of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so if I plug this in for my specific function now, the limit as h goes to 0 of my function, I have x plus h quantity squared plus 4. And then I, I like to do this. I like to put a square bracket there. After the minus sign, I put a square bracket, and then I put in f of x. 
And why I put that square bracket, it just helps me remember to distribute this negative. Otherwise, I forget sometimes, like you do. So I'll make sure that you distribute this negative through. And in looking at this, I can cancel a few things. Well, let me write this out. And so this would be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. That's that expanded. Then I have plus 4 minus x squared minus 4. And this is all over h. And so I can cancel some things. So here's the 4. There's the 4. Oh, look at the x squared. So I did cancel a few things there. And so this is equal to, let me go up here, equals the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared. Miss anything? Nope. All over h. Now this is where the rabbit method comes into play. So if I take that h, if that h goes into all of my items in the numerator, all of the terms, then I can cancel them or reduce them, however you want to say that. And so h goes into there, h goes into there. We call that the rabbit method. We have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. Now you might ask, why are we doing all this stuff, whatever. But this is a 0 over 0. And going back to our talks on limits, if I have a 0 over 0, it's unresolved. And so what I'm doing now is I'm using the, the it's not exactly factoring, but you can factor out h here, and cancel the h so that I've resolved my 0 over 0. And so now if I do this evaluation, I can do a direct substitution of the h, and what I'm going to end up with is simply 2x. And so this tells me that f prime of x is equal to 2x. So I just did it in general using the second definition on the previous page. Now what I, what I have to do though is I have to finalize this. This says that I want the derivative at a particular point. So what I can do then is I can take this and I can say, okay, what is f prime of negative 2? And all you do is plug it in like you would to a normal function. I'm going to take negative 2 and plug it in here for x. That will tell me the slope of my line at negative x equal to negative 2. And that would turn out to be negative 4. Let's look at the calculator with this one then. At x equal to negative 2. Negative 2, I'm going to have a slope of negative 4. Well, it's down to the right. Rise over run seems pretty steep. And so that seems reasonable. What we can do with our calculator is we can also calculate this. So what I will do is I'll go second calc. I'm sorry, I, I want to do draw. So I go second draw. And you have a tangent line here. So you can draw the tangent. And so I type in the value that I want, which would be at uh, negative 2. And if I hit enter here, there it is. And it gives me my equation too. And so this is the equation of the tangent line. y equals mx plus b. Well, sure enough, here's the slope, which is negative 4. And so the slope of this tangent line is going to be negative 4. That's what the derivative told me. What is the slope of the tangent at a particular point? Now, going back to the worksheet, Okay, if we do these next ones, this is the same function as we just had, and so I already know what the derivative is, so I don't have to go through all of that other stuff. I have f prime of x is equal to 2x. That's when I have this function here. And so if I just do f prime for part a, f prime of 2, I plug it in, that's going to be 2 times 2, which would give me 4. So the slope at x equal to 2 of the tangent is going to be equal to 4, which makes sense because I have an even function in the symmetry around the y-axis. Before I had negative 4, now I got 4. And then the other one, you try it. Slope would be 2 at 1. All right? So you can, once you find this formula, then you can plug in different values. And it's the x value right now that, we're being, that is being plugged in. 
Now we have different ways to represent the derivative. We have f prime of x. We have what we call dy dx. And that's just different people uh, who came up with the different notations. This one's y prime. And then this one says the derivative with respect to x of f of x. And really, these two are kind of the same because I have the derivative with respect to x of the y, which is the f of x. And so you can play around with the numerator and denominator there a little bit. But it still follows the rules of um, regular arithmetic. Now, if we find the derivative of this next one, f of x is equal to uh, x plus 4. Well, let's look at the graph of this. And remember that the derivative is the slope. So I'm going to do this one without any calculation. So if I do this one, negative 4 would be my bounce back point. And then coming in here, I'll get this segment and I'll get this segment. So in other words, it's the absolute value function that's translated left 4. Now, if I look at this, the slope coming from the left is going to be negative 1. The slope from the right is going to be positive 1. Now, the question here is what happens at x equal to negative 4? Well, let me write this out as a piecewise function first, and then I'll write out the derivatives. You can pause after. I now, looking at this, if you write out the function piecewise form, I get the opposite of the function for one of the pieces, which makes sense because this one's going to be a slope of negative 1. This one's going to be a slope of 1 which would be just what you see there. And I can split it over. I can put this equal sign on either one since they meet up here. I decided to put it on this one. You could choose, but just put it on one of them. Now I look at the derivative. Well, the derivative for this piece is going to be negative 1. Well, what's the slope of this line? Negative 1. So that is the derivative. And for this piece, it is going to be a 1. Now we've got to figure out these intervals. I'm going to write x is less than 4 here, and I'm going to put x is greater than 4. Ooh, negative 4. These all should be negative 4. If I put the negative 4 in for all those, now where do I put the equal sign? Or don't I? Oh, let me think. Remember that the definition of a derivative is a limit. And with a limit, that means that the left-handed limit has to equal the right-handed limit. So for a derivative, the limit as x approaches c of f of x has to exist. And I should say for f prime. So in order for all this to work, I have to have the limit from the left-hand side equaling the limit from the right-hand side. And in this case, it doesn't work. So I leave out the negative 4, and we just don't have a derivative at that point. And so there is no derivative at x equal to negative 4. We leave it out. And this is what we call at a sharp point. Now, we don't really say the reasoning if you have to give that on a test or whatever. But more so, it's the limit as x approaches c from the left of f prime of x doesn't equal the limit as x approaches c from the right of f prime of x. Sometimes these piecewise functions, the, the derivatives will match up, but it's, it's kind of rare. So at these points that we split the piecewise up, you got to be careful. So, a few places where the derivative is undefined. We said here at a sharp point, and it doesn't have to be super sharp either. It's just kind of a change in the derivative as you're approaching a point. And then another one is a discontinuity. So the discontinuity uh, would be holes and asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes. And then the third case would be a vertical tangent line. Why is that? Why is a vertical tangent line undefined? Or I should say the slope of a vertical line, tangent line undefined. If you take a quick example, y equals x to the one-third. This is the, here's all those marks that were disappearing from the beginning. Uh, if I take this function, it's the inverse of the cubic. So it's really going to flatten off here, which would be a vertical tangent line. i got to draw that even a little bit better. 
And so a vertical tangent line, well, what's the slope of a vertical line? Well, it's undefined. So this one's undefined at x equal to 0 because I have a slope of a vertical line. So those are three cases where we don't have a derivative. Usually, if we have a smooth curve, we should be OK. Now this last one, find f prime of x if f of x is equal to the square root of x. I'm going to set this one up for you and let you kind of finish it. If I do this, this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, and then I'm going to put in x plus h. Okay, so I'm going back to my definition of derivative. I'm putting in x plus h into the function, and then I'm going to subtract out f of x, and this is going to be all over h. I'm going to let you mess with this and figure out how to get rid of these square roots, but you can see that the answer at the end is going to be 1 over the square root of 2 square root of x. So see if you can get to that value. So finally, I'm not going to write this out. You can write this out. What is a derivative? The derivative is the slope of the tangent to a curve. It can be numerical, which is at a point. Or it could be for all values of a particular function. And so it would be in terms of x. All right, thank you. This one's a little long. I apologize for that, but that's the way it is.